my issue. Locate my challenges and give me a word. We need a word. Just pray for yourself, child of God, and say this service shall not be a waste. This hour shall not be a waste. It shall not be in vain. For the Lord himself does not gather his people to waste their time. Father, we pray this morning that you will speak to us individually and corporately. We surrender this service to you. Use your servant to speak to us. Mandebo Shatabakaya. Locate your children. Locate your children and speak a word. Prophesy, Lord God, a word of prophecy. A new message. A new message. Kandebo Sata. Rikana Mandeboso. Rebebebebe Shanda. We are praying, Father, for an unusual encounter. An unusual encounter. An unusual encounter with your people in the name of Jesus. Have your way in our lives, Jehovah. Have your way in our lives. Have your way this morning. Have your way. Have your way. Kandebo Shata. Rima Sukanamandebo Sata. I don't know your need this morning, but place a demand. Place a demand. Place a demand and say, Lord, I want to hear you speak on this issue. I want to hear you speak on my issue. Place a demand even before we start with the service. Place a demand and ask the Lord, Father, locate me. Locate me with your word. Locate me during praise. Locate me during worship. Locate me during the word and the ministration. I want to have an encounter. Robo Shanda Bakaya. In the name of Jesus. Father, we bless you. You said, ask and you will receive. You say, seek and you will find. You say, knock and the door shall be open. We have asked, Lord God, and we thank you already that this service is an unusual service. The Spirit of the Lord will be free to move. I pray, Lord God, that you will touch your people. Distance is not a barrier. Distance is not a barrier. This morning, Lord God, we are asking for a fresh outpouring of your Holy Spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus, speak to us individually and corporately like never before. Let us all, once we are done with this service, point to you and say, I had an encounter with the Lord. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's all welcome Memero to welcome us all. Hallelujah. Memero, you are welcome. You can just unmute yourself Hallelujah. and welcome us all. Hallelujah. Good morning, prophetess. Good morning, apostle. Good morning, royals. Good morning, abandoned life family and friends. The spirit is indeed moving in the mighty name of Jesus. I just want to welcome you all to this service or our Sunday service. What a blessing to be here to online on this service today in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, we welcome you, Holy Spirit, in our midst, wherever we are watching, my Lord, my God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Raboko Maraka Teneri. Hallelujah. Uh, this morning, I just want to welcome you to our wonderful service this morning. The Spirit is already moving. Open up your hearts and receive in the mighty name of Jesus. Abundant Life was founded on John 10.10. 10 which says the thief came only to, in order to steal, to kill and to destroy. But I came that you may have life and have life in abundance. Well, that's why we are called Abundant Ministries, hallelujah. Our vision is to declare the order of God in the lives of his people. And how do we do that? Uh, we do it through our mission, which is to teach and to to preach and to teach the unadulterated word of God, to evangelize, to make disciples and to plant churches and to be a haven for families. We are standing on four values, which are our pillars. We are a house of worship. We are a house of prayer. We serve the only living God and humanity. We believe in excellence. We believe in family. We believe in teamwork. And we believe in integrity. With that, I just want you to open your heart to receive from the Lord this morning through his servant. Get your Bible. Get your notebook. Be expectant. Be expectant. The spirit is moving 
and is busy doing great things. Distance is not a barrier. As you have connected, worship with us. Let's praise the Lord and let's receive from him in the mighty name of Jesus. Back to you, prophetess. Thank you, Bemero. God bless you. Thank you so much. And I believe everyone is feeling welcome this morning. Hallelujah. Let's just worship the Lord. Let's just worship the Lord and appreciate the Lord this morning. Kayaba soko no mondi basanda. Indeed, distance is not a barrier. Don't be limited because you are in your home. Don't be limited because you are in your car. Don't be limited because you are in your bed. Just lift up your hands this morning. The Spirit of the Lord is free to move. Mandebo shanda bakarababande bo siande. Lakasuka namahende borobo. Bobosha, Rekande Bosata Bakayaba and Bosata, Rekerebebe Shanda. Let the Spirit of the Lord find find an expression in your life this morning. Allow the Holy Spirit to move. God is here. Rabba Shondo Boko Riba Handa, Rekene Messiande. Oh Lord, we worship you this morning. We lift up your holy name. We declare there is no other God like you. We declare you are the Alpha and the Omega. We declare that there is no other God. Mande Bosha. Shatabakaya, you are Adonai Elohim. Rika Zukanamande Bosata. Receive all the worship this morning. We crown you, Lord. We crown you, Lord. We crown you, Lord. We crown you, Jehovah. Let your will be done. Let your kingdom come. Today, Lord God Almighty, we give you the authority to move amongst us like never before. Korobobo Sanda Bakaya Basanda. In the life of everyone who is hearing my voice, in the life of everyone who is listening. This morning, move, Heavenly Father God, Riba Shanda, as we lift up our hands to worship you, as we lift up our voices to worship you, we declare you are worthy. Worthy are you, Lord. Mazota Bakaya Bareba, Anamako Sanda. Yes, you are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy, worthy to be praised. You are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy, worthy to be praised. Father, you are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. Oh, no, Boshaya. You are worthy, Lord. Worthy to be praised. Lord, you are worthy. You are worthy, 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 worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy, Lord, worthy to be praised. We declare you are worthy, Lord, you are worthy above everything. You are worthy, Lord, you are worthy, worthy to be praised. Father, you are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. Worthy to be worshipped. Worthy to be praised. Worthy to be adored. Worthy to be served. And we are here just to lift up your name. Yes, you are worthy, worthy, worthy. Yes, you are worthy, worthy, worthy. Yes, you are worthy, worthy, worthy. You are worthy, 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 worthy to be praised. No one else like you, no one else but you. Worthy, 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 worthy. Lord, you are worthy. You are worthy, worthy to be praised. We lift your name higher. We lift your name higher. We lift your name higher, higher. 
in higher. Father, we lift your name higher, 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 higher. We lift your name higher, higher, in higher. Lord, we lift your name above everything. We lift your name, Father. We lift your name. Aye, Kadebo Sata. Hallelujah, Lord. We lift your name, Father. We lift your name, Lord. We lift. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we lift your name higher. Higher, 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 and higher. Higher, higher, higher. Father, we lift your name higher, higher. Lord, we lift your name higher, higher, higher. Lord, I lift your name higher, higher. Father, I lift your name higher, higher. Oh God, higher, 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 higher. Jesus. And they both Hallelujah. Aya. 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 Just begin to worship the Lord. Worship him in the beauty of his holiness. He is the great I am that I am. Unchangeable God. The Lord that was and is and is to come. Everlasting Father, King of glory. Bless his name this morning. Worship His Majesty this morning. Lebrosi kayande lebosia, rakayabashata. We lift up Your name on high. Your name is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. Hallelujah! We bless You. Thank You. We bless You, Lord. We are for the name of Jesus You've given to us. The name that is above every other name. That at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee will bow, every tongue will come confess that Jesus is Lord. We worship you with everlasting Father. Blessed be your name. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive all the glory, to receive all the honor, to receive all the adoration. For there is none like you. We bless you, Lord. We honor you. Blessed be your name. Thank you, King of glory. Lover of our soul, the pillar that holds our life. 
Oh, glorious God. The burden lifter. The one who supplies the anointing that breaks the yoke. The one who part the Red Sea. The one who make a road where there is no road. The Lord of a new beginning. We bless you this morning. We magnify your name. For you are great and you are mighty. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Amen and amen. Glory be to God in the highest. Hallelujah. Please just grab your Bible. I just want us to take some prayer points before we go into the message this morning. Second Chronicles chapter 32. Second Chronicles chapter 32. Hallelujah. We just want to take some prayer upon this morning. As you are opening that scripture, just thank God. Just appreciate God. Tell God, Father, I thank you for the gift of life. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you that you have always there for me. You did not bring me this far to leave me alone. You've always been there providing. You've always been there protecting. He who watches over his tread does not sleep nor slumber. Bless this, him this morning. Worship him. Praise his holy name. Father, we thank you. I thank you for all those who are connected this morning. I thank you for their life. I thank you for the plan and purpose you have for them. To you, O oh God, be all that glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Second Chronicles chapter 32. I want us to read first from verse 9. Then we jump some scriptures. I just want us to pray this morning before we start. Amen. After this, did Sennacherib, king of Assyria, send his servant to Jerusalem. But, but he himself laid sage against lashes and all his power with him. Unto Ezekiah, king of Judah, and unto all Judah that were in Jerusalem, saying, Thus say Sennacherib, king of Assyria, whereon do you trust that you abide in the sage in Jerusalem? Let me take that again, verse 10. Thus say Sennacherib, king of Assyria, whereon do you trust that you abide in the sage in Jerusalem? Do not Ezekiah persuade you to give over yourself to die by famine and by test, saying, The Lord our God shall deliver us out of the hand of king of Assyria. At not the same Ezekiah taking his high places and his altar and commanded Judah and Jerusalem, saying, You shall worship before one altar and burn incense upon it. Know ye not... What I and my father have done unto all the people of other lands, were the gods of the nation of those lands any way able to deliver their lands out of my hand. This was a terrible king that was oppressing all the nations. And he had intention of destroying the people of God. But these people have given their life to the Lord. They listened to Ezekiah the king who told them there is only one God. In the midst of what is happening around, just trust God. Don't trust the idol, just trust God. And here is this evil king coming to say, why do you listen to your king? Maybe there is a, a, a problem that is confronting you right now saying, why are you listening to your man of God? Why are you listening to those who say, pray, we will be delivered? Why are you listening? And this king sent the message. He said, tell them, don't they know what I have done to other people? I have destroyed many people and their gods could not save them. Why are you listening to this king? Surrender and let me have my way. In verse 15, he said, now, therefore, let not Ezekiah deceive you. Nor persuade you on this manner. Neither ye believe him. For no God of any nation or kingdom was able to deliver his people out of my hand. Can you imagine? 
what audacity. And today, we have been confronted with the evil fighting us in the nation. Different issues coming up and he's telling you, God cannot save you. But I'm here to deliver to you a good news. Hallelujah. Quickly jump with me to verse 21. Verse 21. And the Lord sent an angel which cut off all the mighty men of valor and the leaders and the captains in the camp of King of Assyria. So he returned with shame of face to his own land. And when he has come into the house of his God, that they came forth of his own bowels, slew him there with his own sword. Does the Lord save Ezekiah and the inhabitant of Jerusalem? Let's stop there. We're going to pray. From this scripture, we can see there is nothing greater than God. I don't know what you are going to right now that has been tormenting you. Say there is no help. There is no help in calling God. The word of God said the Lord sent his angel and the angel destroy all the power and all the mighty men. This morning, I want you to lift up your voice and say, oh Lord, you are the same yesterday, today and forever. You are the one who delivered King Ezekiah and the people of Jerusalem. Today, we call upon you, send your angel to destroy every enemy contending with our lives. Send your angels to contend with those mighty men stronger than us in the mighty name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and pray this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we call upon you. You are the great I am that I am. You are the Lord that is great and mighty in battle. We call upon you this morning. Just as you did in those days, uh, you have never changed. Uh, send your angel every power, every force contending, threatening to destroy the lives of your children. Let them be slain right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Take them out of the equation in the mighty name of Jesus. Every virus, every infirmity, every sickness that is contending with your people right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Send your angel to destroy them. Take them out of our lives. Take them out of our places. Take them out of our homes. Take them out of our system. Take them out of our nation. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. There is a power that is making children of God to bow their head. There is a power that is scaring the body of Christ. There is a power tormenting children of God, making them to be paralyzed. They are unable to lift up their voices to pray. But the word of God said in verse 22, does the Lord save Ezekiah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem? I stand on that word and I decree over the nation, the nation where you are watching from, I decree over our nation, Thus shall the Lord save us. The Lord will save the leaders. The Lord will save the inhabitants of everything that is tormenting us. Every affliction is hereby taken away in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak into your home. I speak into your body. I speak into your affairs. I speak into your relationship. Today receive victory by the right hand of the Lord. The Lord who did it for Ezekiah shall do it for you this morning. Morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Wherever you are, put your hands together and celebrate the goodness of God. Celebrate the goodness of God. Victory is yours. Victory is yours. Victory is yours. The Lord has promised you, I'm going to strengthen you. The enemy you see today, you shall see them no more. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. If you are with me online, on Zoom, on Facebook, just start no more. I shall not see this enemy anymore. No more. No more. I will not see my tormentors. No more. No more. No more. No more. God has given me victory. I received that victory. Proclaim that victory this morning in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God in the highest. I just want to welcome you to this wonderful service. Glory be to God. I can feel the presence of God and I see the hand of God moving from house to house, settling cases, making crooked ways straight, 
perfecting all that concerns you and your life will never remain the same in the name of Jesus. God bless you. God bless you for joining us in this service. I welcome you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I welcome all the royal children, all the family and friends of Abundant Life Ministry, all those who are watching us from Nigeria, Namibia, and every other part of the nation. You are welcome in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I also want to appreciate the woman of God, prophetess. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you for leading us in that powerful worship. I pray that the Lord will continue to use you for his glory in the name of Jesus. In the in, in, in what the Lord is busy doing in the nation of the earth, you shall be relevant in the program of God in the mighty name of Jesus. I also welcome the children who are, we, are with us here in the studio. May the Lord bless you and continue to use you. May your future be secured in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. So those who are, let's go to the word of God. But as we go, if you are able, please press the share button. Press the share button. Invite somebody. Let them join us and be a partaker of what the Lord wants to speak to us this morning. Amen. The Lord has a word for you. I want you to type, the Lord has a word for you. I am expectant. The Lord has a word for me. I believe that I am expectant. Amen. God bless you as you do so. Let's go to the word of God. We're going to read just one scripture this morning. The book of Acts chapter 3, we're going to read from verse 1 to 8. Acts chapter 3 from verse 1 to 8. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 3 verses 1 to 8. Let me give you time so that you can get your Bible and your pen. Amen. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 3 from verse 1 to 8. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain lame man from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask for arms that enter into the temple. Who seen Peter and John about to go into the temple as and hams? Verse 4. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he hid unto them, expecting to receive something. Then Peter said, Silver and gold I have none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Verse 7, verse 7. And he took him by his right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. If you are taking note, I want you to underline that verse 7. I will read that verse 7 again. And he took him by the right hand. And lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Father, bless the reading of your word. Speak to us as you have intended, even from the foundations of the earth. As I diminish, let Christ increase. Let the power of the Holy Spirit move out from this place. Move from house to house. Move from heart to heart. Touch them and do what you have intended to do. I pray over the atmosphere and I command everything to bow to the name of Jesus. Let there be movement of the power of God. I command that there shall be no hindrance to what the Lord wants to do this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. And at the end of the day, after we have received your touch, after we have been elevated, after we have been settled, we shall sing a new song. Song, and you shall take all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we pray. Somebody shout a loud amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We are in a time 
when we feel like we are grasping breath, we feel like we are running marathon and the energy is depleting and we are doing all we can. There is so much uncertainty in our nation and all around the nation of the world. And the truth is that we all have great needs. We all have great needs. We need someone from time to time to refresh us. We need someone to, re, to, 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 to encourage us. Every one of us. We all have a need. No matter your economic, no matter your political, no matter your spiritual status, everybody has a need. And from time to time, we look for somebody to be there for us, to encourage us to speak into our lives. Hallelujah. And we thank God for those God has been using to refresh us from time to time. Hallelujah. And I pray that God, in his infinite mercy, in his own way, we will, he will continue to meet all our needs. Hallelujah. During these few weeks, we have also come to the knowledge that God is our refuge and our fortress, a present help in time of need. And we thank God for that. We thank God for the supernatural strength. We thank God for what he has been doing. We thank God for reminding us that we should not fear. We thank God that he has stretched his right hand to help us. We thank God and we appreciate it. But this morning, the Lord is speaking to us from the throne of grace. And I have come here with the word of the Lord for you and I in a time such as this. The Lord is speaking to everyone who put their trust in him. He is talking to everyone who believes that God is faithful and he will come true for them. Hallelujah. I believe I have those people listening to me on all platforms. Hallelujah. The Lord is saying, know that I am your light. I am your salvation. The Lord is reminding you this morning, you shall not fear. The Lord is speaking to you this morning. I have giving you a supernatural strength. And I will continue to strengthen you for my name's sake and for my glory. The Lord is saying, the reason why I said I will strengthen you and I will give you that power, this strength, is for my name's sake and for my glory. Because I need you and I want to use you for my glory. Hallelujah. And the Lord is saying to you, I need your hand. Give a helping hand. And that will lead me to the message I want to share with you this morning. Give a helping hand. Hallelujah. Give a helping hand. The Lord is speaking to you in the comfort of your home. The Lord is speaking to you in the midst of what you might be going through. The Lord is speaking to you irrespective of how you woke up and what you are thinking in your mind. The Lord is saying to you this morning, give a helping hand. In the book of Acts chapter 3, we read of the story of a man that was sitting at a beautiful gate. The Bible said the people will carry him and they will leave him there. Go and start your business. And at the end of the day, they will come and carry him. So this man is totally dependent on him, on, on these people. Hallelujah. People will pass him and they go into the temple. They will just give whatever they want to give. And on their way, they will still see the man. They probably might wave to him. But this man is sitting there. The Bible said this man has been lame from his mother's womb. He has been lame from his mother's womb. Hallelujah. Now, on this special day, a day that will change the life of this man, a day that is not like any ordinary day. I believe this day, this man woke up. He has accepted his condition. Though he had a desire, but he has accepted his condition. On this ordinary day, he sat there and God sent two servants of God to him. A day that changed his story. 
a change that the story of his life was rewritten. And I pray for somebody that day is coming to you. A day where heaven will smile upon you. A day where your story will change for good. A day where crooked way will be made straight. That day is coming in the name of Jesus. So the servant of God came to this man. And the minister cries to him. Peter said, I know you are asking for hands, but hear me, silver and gold I don't have. But what Peter was saying is, we have something greater than what you are expecting. We have something greater than what people have been giving to you. We have something greater than money. We have something greater than the silver and the gold. We have that something. And that which we have is the name of Jesus. The one who died and raised from death. The name of Jesus. Yeshua Amashiach. The son of the living God. That which I have is greater than what you are expecting. And he said, in that name, in that matchless name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. The moment the man of God released the word, I believe something happened. At that moment, healing took place. Though the man was still sitting, but something has happened. Why do I know? How do I know? The word of God said, you shall declare a thing and it shall be established. So the moment Peter said in the name of Jesus, because there is power in the name of Jesus, the potency in the name of Jesus has never diminished at any given point. However, after he said, in the name of Jesus, rise up. The lame man was still sitting. The recipient of the healing was still sitting. He could not stand up by himself. Just like I mentioned, this man was lame from his mother's womb. He has been in that position for a very long time. He has never experienced the use of his legs. He heard the command to stand up. He actually wanted to stand up in his mind. He must have been desiring to walk. He must have been desiring to enter the temple. He must have been desiring to go and offer sacrifice like others are doing. That has been his desire. But he was sitting there because he was incapacitated. He had no strength. To stand up by himself. So what happened? The Bible said in verse 7 of Acts chapter 3. Peter when he saw the situation. That I have released the word in the name of Jesus. Healing is hanging on this man. But because of his condition he could not stand up. The Bible said he took him by his right hand. And lifted him. And the Bible said immediately. His feet and ankle bone received strength. The healing did not take place when Peter stretched his hand. The healing took place the moment he spoke the word. But the man could not receive and embrace the healing. So Peter had to stretch out his hand. The man knew what he wants. The man has seen how people walk. He knows in his mind how people dance. But when the healing came, he could not stand up. So Peter, who had strength, which is from God, gave the man a helping hand. The moment Peter gave a helping hand, the man's feet and ankle bones received strength. And the Bible said, he leaped up. He began to walk. He entered into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Hallelujah. People of God, that tells you that man has been thinking, one day if I can walk, I will enter the temple. When he rose up to walk, he could have run home. So those people who have been carrying him, he could have gone into the marketplace. But the first place 
as he went to, he woke up, he stood up, he began to walk, and he went into the temple. And the Bible said, he began to praise God. Which means for so long, he had wanted to praise God. For so long, he has wanted to enter the temple. For so long, he had wanted to walk, but he could not. But when the anointing of healing came, he could not even embrace the healing. But somebody stretched out his head to help him to assess that which heaven has deposited upon his life. There are many people around us like this man. Prayers have been made. <laughs> Prophetic word have been released. God has concluded their case. Answer has been released. But because they have been in a position for a long time, it is difficult for them to rise on their feet. They do not have the strength to pray for themselves. They do not have the strength to praise God and worship God. Many do not have the mental strength to do what they are supposed to do. Why? Because they have been in that position for so long. The position they have been, the situation they are going through, have conditioned their mind and they have accepted the status quo. So when you tell them, God bless you, they don't believe it. They have prayed, they have fasted. The brothers remain a single brother. He desired to get married, but he look at his financial position. Even when he goes to church and he sees a sister, and the Lord says, that is the woman I give to you. He won't be able to approach. Why? Because he has stayed in this condition for so long. Maybe he has been unemployed for so long. Maybe he has been disappointed before. Over and over for so long. Oh, Lord have mercy. Many have prayed. They know what they want. They have desire. They desire to experience the goodness of God. But because... They've been in that position for so long. They cannot hear or see what the Lord is busy doing. No matter how you pray, no matter how much you prophesy, they are not willing because they have become one with the position. This morning, God needs a Peter. God needs a Peter to stretch out a helping hand. Those people are around us. People like all that are in our family. People like that are in our church. People like that are in our society. God needs a Peter. He has released the healing. He has released the deliverance. He has released the breakthrough. But God needs a Peter to stretch out a helping hand to help somebody so that they can assess that which the Lord has prepared. Are you willing to be that Peter? I know you have a need. I know things are not the way you want it to be. But God is counting on you this morning. Hallelujah. Imagine if Peter after that prophetic declaration has left the man alone. That man will have remained the same. And they will come and say, look at this man. He has no faith. The situation is not a matter of faith. The man has enough faith, but he had no strength. It's one thing to have faith. It's another thing to have strength. You can have the faith that if I start this business, God is going to do it for me. But you might not have the financial strength to kickstart it. Many have the faith and they know if I study that course, I will get first class. But they don't have the strength to pay for the registration. They need someone to give a helping hand. The situation around the nation of the world 
It's not encouraging. That is why God said, I will strengthen you. God is expecting those of us who are standing on our feet to give a helping hand to others. He wants us to help those who are vulnerable. He wants us to help those who are in need at this point. God is looking for a Peter to give a helping hand. You might ask, what does it mean to give a helping hand? Or how do I give a helping hand? Let me share at least four ways where the Lord expects you to give a helping hand in this time. Thank you, Jesus. In the book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 13, the Bible says, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost its savour, wherewith shall it be salted? It is henceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. Verse 14 said, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be here. The first way you need to stretch a helping hand, to give a helping hand to someone, is to be the light and the salt to them. You need to be the Bible that somebody can read. There are some people who desire to go to church, but they have been disappointed. By their fellow brothers in Christ. They have been disappointed and injured in the church. And they have concluded, I will never go to church again. But you need to be the light. You need to be the Bible that when they look at your life, your life will minister to them. God is calling such men. God is calling such women. But they are so weak on their knees. They say, I wish I can go, but I can't stand up because what happened to me has crippled me. I don't have strength. It has drained my strength. But when your light shine to them, the way you relate, the way you encourage, the way you speak to them, you are giving a helping hand. And they will know, I thought all born again are wicked. But you are different. Because of your light, I will serve God again. God. It's looking down from heaven. There are so many people sitting at the beautiful gates. They cannot go in. We have prayed for their healing. But God is saying, be the salt and be the light. Let them see the light of God in you in the way you relate to them. Hallelujah. The second way you can give a helping hand is to allow yourself to be a door to somebody's destiny. Be a door to the destiny of someone. What do I mean? Be the one that God will use to open door to somebody's destiny. In 1 Samuel chapter 9 verse 8, we read the story of Saul. Saul was going with his servant. They were looking for the donkey of the father. And at a point... They have depleted everything and they feel they should go. And the servant said to Saul, Master, there is a prophet somewhere. Let us go to this prophet. And Saul, look at his pocket. At that point, Saul was broke. Though he was in, on the journey that God has placed him, he has been set up by God to enter into his destiny. But at this point, when he was at the edge of breakthrough, Saul was broke. He had no money. And he asked the servant, my friend, that idea is good. But I've got nothing, neither. In verse 8, 1 Samuel 9 verse 8, the servant answered Saul and said, Behold, I have here, at hand, the fourth part of a shekel of silver. And I will give it to the man of God to tell us how to go. What happened? Through that servant who gave a helping hand to Saul. Saul was able 
to enter his destiny. The servant gave a helping hand to the master and this helped him to enter the presence of the prophet who will tell them where they are going. Saul's financial strength was weak at this moment, but the servant gave a helping hand. There are people in your family. There are people in the church. There are people in the ministry. There are people in the community who desire to be great. They have great vision. They have great ideas to do something good in their life. Some want to go to school. They have that desire. Some just needed a direction. Some needed to be invited to a church so that they can experience the healing. But they cannot do it by themselves. Some of us are sitting with information that will give breakthrough to somebody. Some of us have the seed, that little resources that will help somebody. They can't do it by themselves. God has placed you in a place that you can give a reference to somebody in this time. Because those people cannot access that place themselves. God needs you to give a helping hand. Sometime, do you know that just by sharing an information, it will save the life of somebody. Just by sharing the idea of what you know, it will save the life of somebody. I have walked this way. This is what I did. And you see somebody struggling. Just sharing that tip, that information will save that person. God wants you to give a helping hand. Hallelujah. God does not want people, us as children of God to be stingy. There are people, they know where you can buy something for a good price, but they decide to keep quiet. That is not the mind of Christ. God is asking you, give a helping hand. The third way God wants us to give a helping hand is by bearing each other's burden. Bearing each other's burden. To bear a burden means to take away or carry off weight someone else is experiencing. This time, in this season, people are carrying so much burden. And God said, give a helping hand and help somebody carry the burden. Problem shared is half solved. When you do this, you are bringing some form of relief and comfort to people in this challenging situation. Many have lost their job. Many have lost their family. Give a helping hand. Check up on your brothers. Check up on your sisters. A simple SMS. How are you doing? I'm thinking of you. I'm praying for you. That is all somebody needs to hear. When you come on ALS, when you come on Sunday, when you come to Bible study, when you come to women on threshing floor, you receive those words, you are full. Somebody else needs to hear those words. Give a helping hand. You don't know what somebody is going through. We have all been conditioned to put on makeup and mask. When we go out, we say fine. And from the time we, a child is born, when you were born, we have been programmed when you are asked this simple question, how are you? The answer is fine. You see a child, six months, eight months, one year, that can barely talk. When they are talking, and uncle come around, auntie come around, and people ask them, we will ask, how are you? The mother will say, tell them, fine. And we grew up with that, fine. But in actual sense, we are not fine. The brother, the sister just lost a family member. They just lost a loved one. How can they be fine? They are not fine. The brother has lost his job. He cannot provide for the family. He knows what it is to be a leader. He knows what it is to lead the family. But he is weak in his knees. 
give a helping hand. Check on your brothers. Check on your sisters. Check on your men and women of God. Pastors are not superheroes. They are human beings like you. God has just placed them in the office. They are praying for you day and night. Check up on your pastors. Check up on your prophet. Check up on your leaders. By so doing, you are giving a helping hand. In the book of Matthew, chapter 27, verse 32, we saw a man from Cyrene by name Simon. He helped Jesus to carry his cross. Jesus was going 100% man, 100% God. But he got to a point that the soldier saw that this guy is weak. They call on Simon. He volunteered himself. He helped Jesus to carry the cross. Galatians chapter 6 verse 2 say, Bear one another's burdens, and so you will fulfill the law of Christ. Be there for somebody, especially in this time. Yes, I know you are going through your own issues. I know you are going through your emotions. But if you consider your position and your situation and compare to another, ah, you are much more better. That's what the Lord said. I will give you strength. If you read in the book of Acts chapter, seven, uh, chapter 11, if you read from verse 27 to 30, it recalls the church coming together in the time of famine. They heard the story that in a town there will be famine. They don't know the people. They don't know them, but they know they are children of God. What did they do? They gather money. They gather resources and you send them. They send those things through the apostle. What did they do? They reach out to the people. In time of famine. Reach out to people. Give a helping hand. That is what God is saying to you. And lastly. Give a helping hand by praying. There are people who are in trouble. They are hurting and they are in bondage. Prayer is one of the helping hands we can give to such people. In the midst of their head, in the midst of their suffering, they need your prayers. We should pray for them fervently. The Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 12 verse 5, Peter was kept in the prison, but the prayer was made. Prayer was made without ceasing by the church for him. And he was set free. I don't know the condition of Peter in the prison. I don't know whether I was able to pray or not. I don't know whether I was able to praise God just like uh, uh, they did uh, with Paul and Silas. But the Bible said the children of God prayed for him. People might know about prayers. People might know how to pray. But the situation they are in at this point is so consuming. It has weakened them that they cannot pray even the way they should pray. God is counting on you to pray for those people. The Lord is saying that you who have received strength, rise up in prayer and pray for someone. Pray for your family. There is somebody that needs your prayer to rise up. Pray for your colleagues. Somebody needs your prayer to rise up. Pray for, for, for your for brethren in the church. Pray for the nation. Pray for the president. Pray for the minister of health. Pray for those who are in leadership. They need your prayer. Pray for your neighbors. Pray for your leaders. Give a helping hand. And as you pray, show love. Let me have this one. Then we round up. Give a happy hand by showing love. At times, loving people is very difficult. I know. And God knows. And when you say love people, love has to edge. There is a time where you love people when they are doing things well or they don't do anything, you just love them. 
But there are times people are doing something that will destroy them. You need to love them to tell them the truth. You give a helping hand. My brother, you are going out of the way of salvation. You are giving a helping hand. You pray for them, you also speak to them. When people are in the wrong, we need to correct them. We need to show the love of Christ to those who are rejected. Hear what Jesus said in John chapter 13. From 34 to 35, he said, a new command I give to you. Love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciple. Reach out to people in love. Even difficult people. There are people amongst your friends. There are people in your family. They are in the bondage of the enemy. How? They know they have wronged you. They know they are doing something that is wrong. But they cannot ask for forgiveness. Some of them are, are, are ashamed. If I go and ask for forgiveness, I will be rejected. So the fear of rejection will make them run away. But be the bigger person. Stretch out. A helping hand. Give a helping hand and tell them you are forgiving them. Tell them about the love of God. Even if they don't know how to say sorry. You be the bigger person. Because if we leave them, the enemy, we have the final say over their life. May that not be their portion. In the name of Jesus. God wants you this morning to give a helping hand. As a representative of Christ, God wants you to be there to stand in and stretch out your hand. You might say, I'm tired myself. Nobody is reaching out to me. Nobody is calling me. But remember the word of God. It says, give and it shall be given unto you. Say, by the measure which you give, shall it be given to you. In your weakness, in your tiredness, God has promised to supply supernatural strength. Use that strength from God and stretch out your hand to help somebody. All you have to do is to avail yourself. To tell God, Lord, I am ready to be like Peter. I am ready to stretch out a helping hand. I am ready to give a helping hand. That is all you have to do. Avail yourself this morning. If you are willing, God is able. If you are willing, God is able. And as we commit this word into our heart, I see a picture where so many people like the men, sitting like the blame men by the beautiful side, will be rising up by the beautiful gate, will be rising up and going to praise God. They need to hear the love of God. They know there is a God. But you need to give a helping hand. And God is ready to supply that strength. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's just pray. I want you to pray for yourself. And say, Lord, I am ready. Lord, I'm ready to be your ambassador. I'm ready to be your hand. I'm ready to be your feature. I'm ready to be the Bible that somebody will read. I'm ready to lift up somebody from where they are so that your glory can shine in them. I'm ready to be the door that somebody will pass through into their destiny. I'm ready to be the one that will open door of greatness to somebody. I'm ready to be the, the dispenser of love in the life of somebody. I avail myself even though I'm weak. Strengthen me. Strengthen me to do that in the name of Jesus. Just pray, just pray in the name of Jesus. Father, your children are praying unto you. They are ready. They are ready to carry the palm of Gilead, to go into the community, to begin to dispense it, to stretch out their hand and lift up somebody on their feet so that they can also praise you. Father, do it, Lord, in the name 
of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. If you are hearing me, and by peradventure you just connect to this live stream, or you will watch later, and you have not had an encounter with Jesus. You don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You've heard about church, but somehow you hate church because of what people have done. You, you, you are not happy. Maybe you have been to church and you have been deceived. They have lied to you. They've taken your money and you say, I will never go to church. Maybe in your mind, when you hear about church, about being born again, you believe they are flustered, they are all pastors are liars. I am here to stretch a helping hand to you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. It's about the love of God, not the love of men. The love we are sharing to you right now is the love of Christ. Come to him. Come to him and invite him into your heart. If you say that is me, I just want you to pray with me. If you are the one who say, I'm ready to invite him into my life. I want to serve him. I want to rise up like that man by the beautiful gate. I want to enter the Holy of Holies and praise God. If you are that one, I want you to pray with me. Thank you, Jesus. Say, so Lord Jesus, I thank you for this day. Thank you for remembering me. Today, I confess all my sins. Wash me clean with your blood. I accept you into my heart. I believe that you died for me and you rose again. And I confess that Jesus, you are my Lord, you are my Savior. I will serve you all the days of my life. Amen. Father, I thank you for as many that pray that prayer. Seal them with the Holy Spirit. Keep them from falling. Preserve them until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer, I beseech you, please send us an inbox. And we will pray with you and we will guide you in the way that you should go. God bless you. Remember, give a helping hand. Somebody is waiting and depending on you. Amen. We give you all, all the glory. Lord, we worship you, my Lord. You are worthy to be praised. We give you all, all the glory. Father, we worship you, my Lord. You are worthy to be praised. I give you all. I give you all, all the glory, Lord, I worship you, my Lord, you are worthy, yes you are, yes you are, I give you all, I give you all, all the glory, hallelujah. I give you all, all the glory, all the glory. I worship you, my Lord. You are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. We give God all the glory for this powerful word that came out this morning. Give a helping hand. It's so, so much comfortable to receive. And all of us want to receive. All of us want people to, to, to give to us. 
But the word is coming to us today. And it says, give a helping hand. From your little, from the strength that you have received, give a helping hand. Hallelujah. Apostle, may the Lord bless you for this word. May the Lord continue to empower you and enlarge your territory. Your voice is indeed the voice that is needed for a time such as this. May the Lord amplify your voice and may your voice serve as a healing to those who are heading, serve as an upliftment to those who are down in the name of of Jesus. Hallelujah. We want to thank every one of you who joined us this talk this morning for this service. May the Lord bless you. Thank you for taking your time to come online. May the Lord bless you. And I know you are blessed this morning. If you can just write one word of how the service was for you, that is your way of, of, of reaching out. Hallelujah. To us as well. If this word was an empowerment word, if this word was uplifting, just take one moment and just write that word how this word was us. Hallelujah. If we were together in the service, I would say shout a loud amen. Hallelujah. The only time or the only way we can hear you is by your comments. Hallelujah. That's the only voice that we can hear once we go through your comments. Hallelujah. That's your amen. So just write it out how this word ministered to you this morning and may the Lord bless you as you do so. Just quick announcements. We will be back online on Thursday with abundant living sessions. <laughs> If I am telling you, it's going from glory to glory. So join us every Thursday for the Abundant Living Sessions. That is where we receive a word that will make us to live life in abundance. We are starting every Thursday at 7 o'clock online, hallelujah, also on Abundant Life Ministries Facebook page, and then on Zoom. The details are there as well. So do join us every Thursday for Abundant Living Session. And also, I want to invite every woman online and your sisters, your cousins, your aunties, uh, uh, your nieces, your mothers, your colleagues, please join every Friday for Women on the Threshing Floor. It's starting at 9 p.m. 9 p.m. so that you can put the family to bed, you know, make the food, uh, uh, serve your husband, do everything that is needed. Let the kids go to bed. And then we, we meet online 9 p.m. every Friday. And this is my gift for his glory. I'm telling you, it's powerful. We are having different women who are coming to bless us with their gifts. Hallelujah. And then on this note, I also just want to give a reminder, Abundant Life Ministries is embarking on a project called Project 1000. We want to build an empowerment center. Yes, in this time is the time that the Lord said, build. And we want to build an empowerment center, which is a place of empowerment, hallelujah, for everyone, for, for, for children, for those adults. So if you want to be part of this project, we are asking $1,000 once off or $100 per month, whichever way the Lord is leading you, or $200 per five months, whatever. The project has started in the month of June, and it's going up till next year, June 2021. So either way, the project is Project 1000. $1,000, you can divide it whichever way you want. Don't stress. This is a voluntary project. Hallelujah. Don't feel, give according to what the Lord says, hallelujah. And if you are not led, please don't, don't, don't be alarmed, hallelujah. This is for those who feel Abundant Life Ministries has been a blessing to me, and I want to sow into this project. If this is your heart's desire, the details are online, the bank details are online, hallelujah, or you can inbox us to find the bank details and just give your contribution per month. Hallelujah. And the flyer is also online. You can just uh, uh, um, make, a, make a copy of that screen uh, screenshot and then you can have the bank details. May the Lord bless you. Thank you so much for coming online. I will call Apostle Beck once again just to come and close the service for us. Hallelujah. We give you all all the glory, Lord, we worship you, my Lord, you are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. God bless you. What a wonderful service. 
I believe we are all blessed. I am also blessed because the Lord spoke to me. Amen. Before I pray, I, I want to thank everybody that joined us. Thank you very much. Uh, Memoro, thank you for, for, for serving on the platform. God bless you. And I also want to appreciate all those who have been giving to Project 1000. May the Lord bless you and bless you abundantly. We mm -hmm. see it and we see what you give from your heart. And uh, we know very soon this project that uh, we have started shall see the reality. And through that project, we will be able to give a helping hand to the community. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day. Blessed be your name. Thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. Thank you for remembering us today. Thank you for the victory you gave to us, and thank you for speaking to us. And indeed, we are rising up to give a hemp in here. We know you have empowered us, and you are strengthening us to do so. And Lord, you will direct us to the area and places where we will give a helping hand. And at the end of the day, we shall give you all the glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you and your family. May the Lord turn his face towards you and grant you peace in this time that surpasses all understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen and amen. God bless you. Shalom. Lord, I worship you.